Yiraşaymase! Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris, bringing you the chef's choice in weekly gaming news for this week, November 16th, 2015. So we did go and get a decent bit of news last week, mainly due to a Nintendo Direct that went and dropped on Thursday. So that being the case, let's get cooking and dive right in, shall we? So first off, we'll go and cover some of my highlights from the Nintendo Direct. I'm not going to go and cover everything that was present within the Nintendo Direct. I actually highly recommend that you go and watch it yourself as I go and find these programs to going to be really fun to go and watch as well as informative. Uh, but there were some highlights in there and I'll go over what I went and thought was interesting. So this was the first Nintendo Direct in five months and it's the first Nintendo Direct since Satoru Iwata went and passed away in July. So there was definitely a somber note and they kind of went and started with that, which is good to go and acknowledge that. This is one of those things that kind of just needs to go and be said to go and move on as the Nintendo Directs were kind of Iwata's brainchild to begin with. Uh, but anyway, that aside, uh, we're going and starting off with their first announcement, and one that I thought was quite interesting, was they went and announced The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD for the Wii U. So, those of you who are familiar with the Twilight Princess, which I hope would go and be most of you, as it really is a great game, it was a launch title for the Wii, as well as one of the last major uh, titles developed by Nintendo for the GameCube. So, it went, was a launch title for the Wii back in 2006, six so we're like looking at nine years on so they're going and releasing this one next year as an HD title for the Wii U itself I'm definitely excited about that because although the game itself goes and looks great and was definitely one of the like arguably one of the best uh, Wii U titles from the get-go also including you know you had some really great ones like the galaxies and the Skyward Sword it would be great to go and see this one go and receive the HD facelift go and be in full HD since it was was a really great game and going and doing away with some of the waggle physics controls would also go and be welcome as well uh, since that's one problem that the Wii copy did actually go and have uh, my opinion anyway so that was their first big announcement and of course along with their usual uh, operations these days there's going to go and be an amiibo for it that's going to go and even tie in with uh, the Wii U that they're the Wii U Legend of Zelda they're developing also slated for 2016 which is incidentally the 30th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda franchise uh, so definitely some awesome news there in addition to that they went and had some new Pokemon news as well so they went and showed some footage Footage from Pokémon Tournament, which not really uh, new per se as far as information, and they haven't given a firm release date. It's still targeted for Spring 2016 as far as the um, worldwide release is concerned. But it's out in March in Japan, so hopefully that goes and sticks to that. It's one I'm definitely excited to go and play. You know, be able to go and put the smack down on little Pikachu. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, in addition to Pokemon Tournament, though, they went and had a little bit of uh, just kind of a trailer for the upcoming Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, which goes and releases this week, actually. Uh, that'll be out Friday. Uh, just going and showing off some of the fun features of that game. And it's if you're a fan of uh, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeons, then this one is definitely going to looking like it's going to be a great one for you. In addition to that, there was also... Uh, free to start Pokemon Picross announced. Uh, this one is kind of a little bit disappointing because it seems like the Pokemon franchise is going and getting to be the whipping dog of the Nintendo free-to-play uh, experiments. And that's not what I want to go and see for the Pokemon franchise. But if you do go and enjoy the Picross titles or you're a fan of P uh, Pokemon as is, it might be worth going and having a look at it. It is going to go and be free to start, at least. That's the way they stated it within the Nintendo Direct as well. And then there was also one other really big piece of Pokemon. Pokemon news. So if you're a fan of the original red, blue, and yellow, go and get ready to go and fire those ones back up. Nintendo's going and releasing those ones on the eShop in February, specifically February 27th, which is the exact same day of the year that the original red and blue went and released way back in, was it 98? Anyway, I can't quite remember, but they're going and releasing those on the 3DS. We're mo mostly unchanged from the original, with the exception that they're going and designing it to go and work with the Wi-Fi communication of the 3DS so that you'll be still be able to go and trade Pokemon with others without the use of a link cable, which they definitely pointed out. 
So that's definitely exciting news for Pokemon fans. Although, if it were my taste, I would rather go and have uh, 3DS eShop uh, releases of the GBA releases, uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Those ones would be awesome to go and see on a 3DS. At least, I, I think so. Some other really big pieces of news uh, from my perspective was the uh, new release date for Star Fox Zero. Star Fox Zero was originally supposed to go and come out this month. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually supposed to go and release this week, but it got delayed to spring 2016. So the release date is now April 22nd, 2016. That we didn't really go and get much in the way of new gameplay footage from the Nintendo Direct, but it's still great that we actually have a new release date for this. I'm really stoked for for this Star Fox title, even if it is a reset for like the third time. Oh well, we can go and definitely move past that. Another title that we've finally got our North American release date on is Fire Emblem Fates. And this one's one that I'm super excited about. Fire Emblem Fates is going to go and launch February 19th uh, next year, and it's going to go and have basically the same type of release that the Japanese uh, releases went and had. There's going to go and be two retail releases right off the bat, Conquest and Birthright, and then there's going to go and also be a special edition available where you can go and get both Conquest and Birthright and the DLC chapter, which is going to go and come later, Revelation. So if you're interested in... Um, getting all three you'll be able to do that with a special edition or you can kind of go and just pick up just one or the other with the DLC chapter later if, if you want and so that's definitely exciting news right there come February you probably won't go and be seeing like much of me as I'll just go and be buried in my 3DS going and playing that title and then the last big piece of news that they went and had from the Nintendo Direct was a new character for Super Smash Brothers and that new character is Cloud from Final Fantasy 7 so this is definitely an interesting addition to it as well if you know the lore of Final Fantasy 7 it was originally supposed to go on a release on the Nintendo's console but due to storage limitations mainly it ended up going and moving to a PlayStation title and, and that was where the series would go and reside for most of the rest of its release cycle but going and having a cloud go and release with the Super Smash Brothers almost goes and feels like a poetic justice in the way that Final Fantasy is going and returning back to the Nintendo consoles. Um, so it should be super fun to go and play as Cloud. It looks like he goes and has both his um, regular Final Fantasy VII appearance as well as his Advent Children appearance and a lot of his like uh, special moves like Omni Slash. So definitely looking forward to going and playing him when he goes and comes out, and I hope you are as well. So that's one of my highlights from the Nintendo Direct. Going and moving on to other news throughout the week. So Kotokawa Games went and had a fall media briefing that went and had a few interesting pieces of news, specifically since they're like worldwide announcements. So there were two titles that they went and announced uh, brand new that are coming out worldwide. The first is uh, Root Letter, which is a mystery adventure going and releasing worldwide in spring 2016. So it kind of essentially looks like it'll be kind of a mystery visual novel um, along the lines of other titles like maybe uh I'm not sure how it going, uh, how like if it's going to go into a gory like direction or not, but maybe something like Corpse Party or like 999, that sort of thing. So that one should go and be interesting to go and see how that is, especially since it is going to be a worldwide release. And then there is also another one that they announced as a worldwide release, 2016, no specific release date, just the 2016 in general, and that's God Wars, which um, is uh, looking to be a tactics strategy RPG that they'll go and be releasing. And both of these titles are for the PlayStation 4 and the Vita, um, just for clarification's sake. Um, they also went and mentioned that the previously announced uh, Demon Gaze 2 for the Vita would go and be releasing sometime in 2016 as well. So just a reaffirmation of that. And that they were looking for fans' ideas on things, uh, content they could include in the game itself. Although I think this is looking for content, or rather fan input on the Japanese side, not so much the international side. And then, in association with Falcom, they also went and announced the um, release, uh, or the upcoming release of The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, the third evolution for the Vita. So, the uh, Trails in the Sky, or rather, the Legend of Heroes Evolution series that they've gone and released across the Vita are basically um, upscalings of the PSP titles that they had gone and previously released uh, in the Legend of Heroes series just for the Vita, and usually going and incorporating. Um, 
full voice acting or at least uh, significantly more voiced than the original games were. So the fact that they went and announced this one, which will go and complete out the Trails in the Sky uh, trilogy as uh, evolution titles, is definitely interesting. It'd be great if we had a chance of getting these ones stateside, but where it took so long to go and get uh, the first Trails in the Sky as well as second chapter, I'm not necessarily going and holding my breath for this one. But still, it's definitely neat to go and uh, hear it announced, and uh, I'm definitely excited to go and see how it goes and does when it goes and comes out. So moving on to another announcement this week, uh, Axis went and announced that they go are going to be localizing the Langrisser RE Incarnation Tensei title in um, 2016, spring of 2016. So this one's definitely interesting as the Langrisser series is one that before this title came out for the 3DS in Japan, had actually been dormant in Japan for quite a while, and we haven't actually seen a Langrisser title released in the North American territories since two or not not even 2000 since 1991 it's been 25 years since uh the game war song when came out for the genesis i could not sure what the original japanese title for that one was but certainly a long time so it's definitely exciting to go and see this title when uh going and coming out um in the north america next year uh the original or the japanese original release of this one came out in july i think it went and met relatively positive reviews overall so i'm looking forward to that then Moving along to our next piece of news, Sekai Project went and announced the release date for their localization of Clanad on Steam. That's going to go and be releasing November 23rd, so just right around the corner. Uh, this is one of um, Key's uh, visual arts most uh, acclaimed um, visual novel series, or not even series, visual novel games. Um, so. And finally going and getting this one is definitely exciting news, especially since it's just right around the corner. It didn't seem like the Kickstarter for to fund this one was really all that long ago, and here it is already ready for release. So that's really exciting. Um, I'm not sure when I'll get the time to go and play it, but I'm definitely planning on going and picking that one up. And if you're a fan of visual novels, I highly recommend you go and pick it up as well. Let's go and support the industry. Moving on to my next piece of news, this one is a really interesting one. So earlier in the week when I saw the conclusion of an interesting alternate reality game between the Binding of Isaac uh, head developer, Ed McMillan, and the Binding of Isaac community. So the short of it is that through a clues left via Twitter in the game, and then as uh, things started to go on unfold in um, like uh, items like left in real uh, world locations as well as voicemails and all this, uh, fans were led to a location where they went and were able to go and find this doll that uh, tied into the Binding of Isaac game, or specifically tied into a Twitter account. And through going and finding this doll and going and using the Twitter account, they were able to go and unlock a new character in the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, the DLC for the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Then that particular character is the Keeper. So yeah, I'll go ahead and include a link below to a full write-up of the whole events of it, but this is super fascinating stuff to go and hear about the crazy levels of digging and um, just like puzzles that the um, creators of The Binding of Isaac went and created for fans to go and find and ultimately go and unlock this new character. I can't go and begin to tell you just how much my mind is blown by the whole thing. It's just amazing. It's awesome. It's beautiful when you can go and see this kind of interaction between the game creators and the community at large. Definitely awesome stuff. So I highly recommend you go and read that. It's a really um, intriguing read. And if you haven't gone and played The Binding of Isaac Rebirth or Afterbirth, well, specifically Rebirth, I would highly go and recommend giving that one a try as it's an awesome game. You know, the art aesthetic might not be for everybody, but the gameplay itself is truly, truly beautiful. All right. Moving on to our last piece of news, we're going and closing this one out with a burst, and that's the announcement that Darius burst. So I haven't necessarily gotten um, seen much other confirmation of this one, but apparently Darius Burst, uh, uh, Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors is going to go and be getting a North American release, and that's going to go and be at the end of this month. So the dates don't necessarily seem quite right in my mind, but it's supposed to go and release on the PlayStation 4 and the Vita November 30th. 
and then going to releasing on Steam December 3rd. I'll go and include a link below to Dejika's site so you can go and see for yourself. Um, this is really exciting news. I was planning on going and uh, buying a copy on the Japanese side as soon as it went and released for the PlayStation 4, but if I can go and pick one up even sooner than I was expecting via the North American PlayStation Store, I am stoked. So, this is one that I've definitely been looking forward to since I've gone and seen its announcement and going and realizing that I might be getting on my hands on it even sooner than I had originally and expected has me just like jumping for joy. I'm super excited about the prospect of going and getting uh, Darius Burst like that much sooner and especially localized for uh, the North American region. That's awesome that we're going and getting this kind of treatment for a uh, shoot 'em up title. So definitely look forward to my coverage on that one when it goes and releases because I'll definitely go and be there the very minute that I can be. All right, that'll just about go and wrap it up for this week's news show. Thank you so much for coming out and joining me. If you go and have other news articles you think I should go and report next week's show, please leave those in the comments below. Or if you have any other comments about this week's news or any other comments about the show itself, I would also love to go and hear from you about that. Once again, thank you so much for coming out and joining me for this week's weekly gaming news, and I hope to go and see you again next week. <laughs>